All right, we're going to get started. This is a live Studio 6 session. We've got April and Ian here from Passive. We're very excited to have you play. So, yeah, go ahead. Take it away. <laughs> Yeah, so that was really good. I haven't heard that one before. It's a new one? Yeah. Right yeah. on. Freshy. Okay. 
to another? Well, yeah, but wait, I have some questions okay. for you. So, April, um, yes. might as well let's talk to you. Okay. Uh, do you want to tell us a bit about how this band came together and how did you guys get to this place you're at now? I know, like, you're... Um, your recordings on Bandcamp are from 2015 and 2017. Yeah. Uh, number one and number two. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, so how did it start and how did you get to where you are? Well, um, Eden and I, we met working at a music shop. And uh, I think we both realized that we had never been in bands before at all. And so uh, we wanted to start a band really badly. I think I, at least I wanted to. I'm sure you wanted to, too. You had your own solo project at the time. I was just doing some weird, like, experimental ambient shit, and, um... Wait, I'm allowed to swear on this thing. Um... <laughs> just try to it. avoid it, just... The, uh, <laughs> yeah. Avoid F-bombs, for sure. Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> just checking in. Right. Um, and then, I guess, we were like, why don't we just start a band? Because why not? Um, and then practiced for a while and played our first show at our friend's uh, show at the Media Club. Yes. And then we just played shows ever since, so... Right. Yeah. And how did the sound sort of, uh, well, what you guys were making as music, how has that progressed in your opinion? Uh, it's gotten um, darker. I mean, it's a little bit darker before, like, or dark before, but now it's just gotten a bit uh, slower, heavier, mm -hmm. which I don't think we ever really intended in the first place. We well, just you evolved to that because of mm -hmm. music that we like, but... Yeah, you had said that you just started playing drums with the, the band's formation, right? Yeah, like I'm like um, primarily a guitar player since I was a teen. And yeah. then uh, I've always wanted to play drums anyways, and so this is a good excuse to do it. And we were just borrowing our friend's drums at the time, and it just worked out. Yeah. Also, Ian's a way better guitar player than I am, so <laughs> it made sense that he was a guitar opposed to me. <laughs> All right, cool. Wrong. <laughs> oh, what? <laughs> Contested facts here on live. Yeah. <laughs> Studio session. All right, well, um, do you guys want to get into your next song? Yeah, sure. Yeah.
Nice. Are you guys we're gonna play another one still? Hell yeah. yeah. All right. Right on, thank you. <laughs> so, um, so that one was uh, that's Vulture Vulture Halo. So, can... yeah, yeah. Um, I think that's a that's a perfect song for asking you about like your the way that you guys layer your sound, because though you know from I've seen you before, mm -hmm. and then hearing you here t today, also your recordings, the way you um, the way you've engineered them or mixed them, let's say. Yeah. Um, it's like there's a layer, there's like a layer cake going on here. <laughs> and yeah. uh, 
uh, the way your vocals fit in, right, kind of in this other layer, and your mm -hmm. gu guitar and your drums, and you, you're able to make this like impressive amount of sound for just the two of you. So I just wanted to get into that. Mm -hmm. Maybe talk about uh, your your gear if you want, uh, the sure. pedals. Um, what do you normally play with to make the sound? Yeah, well, um, in a two-piece band, the nice thing when well, not having a bass player is you can kind of make the guitars as muddy and low frequency and do whatever you want with them in the mix without thinking about fighting with the bass frequencies too much. Um, it's mainly the way you play too. Um, I do a lot of sort of bass notes and low drone notes while there's bigger chords and melodies happening on the top. And um, obviously pedals help a lot with that too, with uh, just dynamics. I uh, just I use an overdrive and a fuzz and a delay pedal just to I kind of use them a lot as dynamic pedals rather than kind of tone shapers or whatever. Um, what else? Oh, yeah, always neck pickup. Mm -hmm. Always. Yeah. What guitar is that? That's just uh, it's like a Mexican telly. Mm -hmm. It's like a 50s style thing. Yeah. Do you, uh, yeah. you normally play with two amps? Uh, when I can, I do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like to do that. that? Yeah. Um, well, in a lot of venues, it just kind of helps to have two slightly different tones projecting in a, in a room. And when you're playing lots of DIY small venues, it's kind of cool to have the stereo image coming from straight from the stage. Mm -hmm. And it just, it's a lot of fun and sounds good, yeah. I think. So. Right on, thanks. Yeah. April, sure. I wanted to ask you about, um, so you did the graphic design for the tapes that you've released? Yeah. Nice. It's great. I really like Thank it. Thank you. <laughs> so people listening and watching this, go to their band camp, look at what I'm talking about. <laughs> but yeah, um, I was wondering uh, about the sort of the idea of calling the first release number one, the second release number two. And that was, so are you going to continue along with that aesthetic direction and a similar look and feel? Uh, yeah, um, I think we were talking about this a week or two ago um, because we we're looking to release a third record and we weren't sure to follow that s fall suit with that, but mm -hmm. we said, yeah, we're going to. Um, it seems simple, a really concise, kind of uh, direct way to present records. I know that a lot of bands don't do it and it's kind of like whatever, but uh, we like it a lot. I think it suits us. So I like it too. Yeah, yeah. We both love, like a lot of like black and white work, so <laughs> just uh, keeping that theme as well it would be nice. Um, but yeah, yeah. All right, thanks. It's also just not having, not being able to come up with a name for the records. So. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which is like, yeah, in all honesty, yeah. Keep it simple and, you know, put yeah. that uh, work into the lyrics and, yeah. Yeah, it's all in the lyrics. I always, I always thought it was funny when bands uh, like would do their first three records numbered and then go off and do names. <laughs> I was I always wondered when I was a kid why they didn't just continue. Stick with the format, or the formula. It. Yeah. And then, like, what number are you gonna get to? <laughs> oh, hopefully not too high. <laughs> so. Yeah. <laughs> just keep it keep it concise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, well, are you guys ready for another uh, set of songs here? Yeah. Yeah. I think so. Okay, great. Two more is good. Yeah, that'd be cool. awesome. Sweet.
Well, last one. Wait, should we do uh, like the next two questions and then the last one? Sure. Yeah. Let's do that. That makes sense to me. Okay. That was great, by the way. <laughs> well, okay. I have a note for what that song was. It's new. It doesn't have a name. Oh, thank you. Okay, yeah. thanks. Yeah, we're good. <laughs> Save yourself the trouble. You win. All right. So, yeah, um, you guys have, uh, have you played a lot of venues in town. Mm -hmm. You play a lot of shows. Yeah, I think there was a time that we were playing a ton of shows. I'd say like 2016. Mm, probably. Mm. Is that like more than one a month or around yeah, one a month? I'd sometimes, say sometimes. Yeah. Like two or three. I remember it was one week, a uh, couple weeks where we're like, or one week where we're playing three shows or something. <laughs> that was silly. It just happens sometimes when you have like friends that ask you to play shows and then you don't realize how much is compounded within a month. And so I think we're uh, uh, now being more meticulous about, or you know, how to spread out our shows kind of thing. Right. Yeah. And I uh, wanted to know, so you, so you have a lot of experience then um, with with being in you know being in a band in this city, and there's been a lot of changes. And uh, mm -hmm. I was wondering what what you guys think the challenges or opportunities are uh, being an artist in this city, trying to be in a band with stuff like the, you know three 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 Clark shutting down recently or other venues. Yeah, I mean those that's the constant struggle really in this city at the obvious onslaught of gentrification <laughs> and um, pushing people out and less less place for people to be able to afford to have freedom and time and space to have safe places and um, venues and all that stuff because it's not of any sort of interest to anybody in development obviously mm -hmm. so but you know it's like it's kind of constantly just turning over venues and stuff if people keep fighting keep doing the thing mm -hmm. so so like one will shut down another one will pop up almost like yeah pop up for a bit i mean it's hard when like a place like 333 that's been open in for like in a few different incarnations for a few Forever. decades yeah like yeah so that's a, that's a hard one i think i think that's so. like one of the biggest ones that's uh shut down in, in, a, in a while um i think we're pretty used to having new venues pop up and then them shutting down almost immediately or within a few months sometimes within the year oh, yeah. um I remember there was like maybe a year like maybe 2014 i'm just throwing that out but like um just like i think it was like three or four venues like opening then shutting just not able to make it happen yeah, yeah. you know just like, there's so many high. obstacles i yeah. think um with trying to run a venue and also uh even rehearsal space, do you guys find that's been a, uh, have you heard, is that a, th a thing that's hard to come by? I mean, one just opened and, and okay. we've been in that one for a bit. Um, yeah. It's either... Unfortunately, like rehearsal spaces are pricey for sure. Yeah. That's the thing. Mm -hmm. You know, the more and more people who can't afford to live in like a, a punk house or a house of people and have a jam room set up in the basement, mm -hmm. then. Yeah, especially you know. in neighborhoods in Vancouver, it's not really like uh of like you know neighbors don't really like it all that much and so we have to result to having uh jam spaces which is great but it does cause issue and it's like a bit too pricey sometimes or there's not a whole lot of them and the ones that do exist they're not in the public are pretty secret and are among friends which is also great too but mm -hmm. it's really hard for somebody who's like not already in it to kind of find a yeah like in the scene or whatever to, mm -hmm. yeah to play music mm -hmm. so yeah yeah so well, it's a good thing to keep the. It's it's a good thing that you're part of it. I think um, everybody who continues to participate in it is helping keep things going. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I think it's like important to like be there, um, and participate in the scene a lot. Um, How can people do that? Oh, just go to like all the shows. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go to shows. Uh, yeah, just go like there's so many shows that happen, and I think there might be like a bit of a gap between like. The, and maybe I'm not sure if it's like a necessarily good thing because maybe having too many too much of the public going to these shows might shut down these said venues and get the wrong <laughs> people or something. But can't gatekeep, and it's nice to have kids like involved in the scene all the time, you yeah. know, and bring in new kind of bands that are really interesting and yeah, sick, you know. And a lot of shows are uh, not a fluff, or no one turned away for lack of funds. Yeah, right? yeah, yes, for yeah, sure. Yeah, pretty much any DIY kind of space is yeah is right that. i think there's a general understanding that it's quite difficult to maintain uh in the city and then try to do everything at the same time yeah, you know no and 
if like for me like going to shows is like my downtime i want to i try and go to all of them and i try to like pay money for all of them because they're really important yeah you know thanks okay well i guess what's next for you guys what are you doing uh What's um, your plans? We have new music. It's uh, going to be out eventually. Just finished being mastered. Yeah. I think. Great. So, like a few days ago. Yeah. I'm finally. looking forward to it. So that'll be like eight, eight tunes, I think. Probably do it on a tape because yeah. vinyl's really expensive. Mm -hmm. <laughs> tape's good enough. Tape's I mean, then great. you've got your, your download code and your fan yeah. camp and, you know, yeah, I love tapes. tapes. Yeah. Tapes forever. <laughs> <laughs> totally. I don't have a tape player anymore. I mean, but still, I have tapes. <laughs> yeah, I gotta, get, I gotta get a new one. Mine's broken. <laughs> All right, guys, let's play play us out with uh, your last song for the cool. night. Thanks for having uh, us. Yep.
Way to end on a high note. Thanks, guys. This has been a Studio 6 session. Um, thanks to Passive. Thanks for being here. It was awesome. Thank you. All right. <laughs> Got through it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm fucking toasted. Right. Let's get some air in here. <laughs> <laughs>